Hi, this is what I coded last time, and today I'll be showing you how to adapt it to make the slider vertical. For those who are new here, about three and a half years ago, I wrote this massive article on CSS tricks called A Sliding Nightmare. I'll be linking it in the description, but it's basically a deep dive into how range inputs work in various browsers, implementation differences, stuff like that. And the sad conclusion of the orientation section, how to make sliders vertical, was that our best bet to get a result that works cross-browser and can use our own custom styles was to use a transform on a slider. And sadly, things haven't changed. And if I knew anything about video editing, I'd insert a funny sound here. But yes, that's not a joke. That's our best option, using a transform, and it's a real pain. Which is why today I'll be showing you how to adapt the card demo from last time, so this one you see right here, to use a vertical slider, because unfortunately it's not that straightforward and it's a bit more limited than the horizontal version. So, as I said, we get to a vertical slider by rotating the range input inside our card element. But the thing is, here with the horizontal motion, we have that the, uh, the sliders width is determined by the card's width, and its height is determined by the card height. Now, if we rotate it, then it means that its width is determined by the card's height. And there is really no way of doing this in CSS unless we have a fixed aspect ratio. So, what we have right here with the aspect ratio changing, this doesn't work in the case of a vertical slider. So, yeah, that's... Unless, I guess we could make the height of the slider super, super tall, like, I don't know, 8,000 pixels tall, and it gets cut off by overflow. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm not really sure that's a great idea. Uh, so, yeah, we will be using a fixed aspect ratio uh, between the width and the height of the card. And the second, well, easier issue to deal with is this background right here. This one is set on the track, but the track gets rotated with the slider if we apply a rotate transform on the slider. So this means that the background gets rotated too. And we have no way of rotating back the background into position, just the background into position. So we have to take this background off the track and set it on the card itself. So those are some changes we need to make and um, it's what I'll be showing you today. So uh, we already have this empty demo right here and um, we'll be taking stuff here and copy pasting everything. So basically we're just going to copy paste every panel and then uh, just modify the CSS because uh, the other two panels don't need any changes, but I just wanted to show you that, uh, yeah, it's the exact same code. It's not, um, it doesn't have any changes before uh, we do anything. So now we are going to have to set here on the card, we're going to have a card width. And we'll be setting that uh, to the value there. And actually, we're going to use a clamp. And we're going to have another value. So we're going to have something like a card 2. And this is going to be something like, uh, I don't know, 50 amps. Let's say that's going to be it. Okay, that's where it is. Okay, so we're going to have the maximum. That's going to be that uh, card two. And we're going to have a card factor. So that's basically our aspect ratio. So this is going to be two. Okay, uh, so when we computed the card height, Uh, this is going to be calc. Um, card factor times the card width. So here,
So basically it's going to look something like that. And we are going to, let's, um, let's just collapse those for now. Yeah, we can collapse the hover. And let's say we're going to have something like a media query. So media min aspect ratio, uh, and it's going to be one over the card factor. So we'll be setting uh, the card height. Okay, so uh, basically this is going to give us the card height. That's going to be viewport height. And the card width is going to be calc. And it's going to be the card height over the card factor. And let's line stuff properly because somehow that got messed up. Right, and we'll be using another image that has a more fitting aspect ratio. And that's basically me wearing a hoodie I really like. So um, yeah. Okay, now having done that, let's switch here. Okay, so uh, the width is going to be not 100%, it's going to be the card height. And the height is going to be the card width. Okay, and um, we are going to set place self. So place self center. Okay, and then we'll be setting transform rotate minus 90 degrees. Okay, and now we are going to replace those Oh, and we are going to need uh, to set uh, a grid template because it, uh, yeah. So here, uh, we're going to need to align content. And here when we have the before and after, we're going to need uh, to, um, for the grid area, we need to switch. So they're going to be on uh, rows, okay? But we are going to need to explicitly set uh, here a grid template. So grid template, um, rows max content, max content, and then it's going to be the card width for the column. So now Okay, so for some reason it's smaller. Um, oh yeah, one thing we need to do, when we reset here, we need to set font inherit. Right? Okay, so now that put Okay, um, one more thing uh, here. We have align self, but it's actually justify self in this uh, case. Okay, and for some reason, uh, we need to switch those positions. So it's not going to be um, plus Q there for the grid area going to be plus not Q, right? Okay, so, but I have no idea why they are so tall, why that's their height, that's their max height. I don't know. Maybe if I set min content, is that going to work? 
it doesn't seem to work. Okay, um, we'll fix that in a moment. But uh, for now, let's um, fix the image part. So, um, we are going to set here transparent for the background because otherwise it's just going to be white. Okay, and on the card, And of course, and yeah, that doesn't work because the position is set here. So we need to move the position up on the card. Now it should work. Okay, and it shouldn't be at 90 degrees. Right, it should work like that. Oh, and of course, uh, again, the position doesn't work because in this case, it should be just K times 1% in this case because it doesn't um, go outside with the track, with the input and the track anymore. So, yeah. Now, of course, something else. Uh, we have east-west resize. We need north-south resize. So we have the proper type of arrow there. Okay. So it is starting to look like something, but it's really weird why those stretch out so much, why, why they're so tall, because I really don't get why they are so tall. Um, so yeah, I have no idea why they're so tall. Uh, but what we can do is um, we're going to have some label height. It's going to be 1.5. And we're also going to set a label margin, which I believe was 0.5 ms. Okay, so now here we'll be setting label margin and that's going to be the label height okay so having done this we are going to set here uh, repeat um, label height times uh, 1m plus twice the label margin and we want this repeated twice okay okay so this cell looks fine now so for some reason it doesn't work anymore the the card motion. Uh, we'll see in a moment why it doesn't work anymore. But uh, for now, let's just, let's actually make this a calc, just uh, in case they have different units. So calc. So just in case that margin isn't expressed in M's as well. Because maybe we want to change that in the future. So yeah, we don't want to be tied to that. Okay, so having done that, let's see it. So for some reason, it doesn't get that. Um, so let's see what the problem is. Okay, so um, it's basically infinity, infinity. Um, so why? So um, the size computes to zero for some reason. And I have no idea what that reason may be. Um, 
but let's see. So after we've done that, let's see. Three hundred. Okay. For some reason, it doesn't compute to zero. So then, what's uh, the problem there? Let's see. So on mouse move, everything looks fine there. For some. So why does that compute to infinity? I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that, but I fixed it already. So, that is very, very strange because now it's working fine. So, yeah, I don't know why it was infinity there, why I had to make some changes to the JS, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, that was that was strange. Okay, so that's pretty much it. This is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Well, if you've enjoyed it like 5% as much as I enjoy this hoodie, <laughs> then I'm happy because I really love that artwork. Just look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Look at it. Anyway, uh, I will be leaving it at this and um, I will be linking to everything in the description, my article and this thing and the previous demo and the previous video and everything basically. So yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out for almost nine years now, please consider supporting it so I can put out more in the future. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description or you can give me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool, even though range inputs are really messed up. But anyway, until next time, bye.